Hi, welcome to this tutorial on hypothesis testing for the Poisson distribution. Now in this tutorial what I hope to show you is what we mean by a hypothesis test. Also the difference between one-tail and two-tail tests, what we mean by the null hypothesis H0, how to set up the alternative hypothesis H1, when we reject the null hypothesis and finally the difference between nominal significance level and actual significance level. So let's get started then. Now suppose we look at the number of vehicles and we'll call X the number of vehicles passing under a motorway bridge every minute then we can assume that providing the number of vehicles is free to flow that that follows a Poisson distribution with a mean lambda. Now let's suppose there's say 60 cars passing underneath the bridge every minute. Then X follows the Poisson with a mean of 60. And if I was to draw a number line for this to illustrate how many vehicles we can expect, it could be zero maybe, one, two, and so on. I say expect the number of vehicles we would expect. Well, if the mean is 60, then we're going to expect really somewhere around the kind of 60 level. We're going to find that it's not going to always be 60. There's going to be some variation around here. So let's imagine that that variation is somewhere typically like that. Maybe we'll get 59 vehicles or say 61 or 57 or 62. Who knows, but it will be scattered somewhere around here. It's generally likely that you're going to get roughly around 60 vehicles if the mean is 60. If we found that we got no vehicles or one vehicle, two vehicles passing under the bridge in a minute, we're going to think that the mean, I would hope, is less than 60. And if we found that we got a high number of vehicles, like 100 vehicles, surely you're going to kind of expect that something's a bit odd here. Generally, you get around the 60, not 100. So maybe the mean isn't 60, but it's more than 60. And this is what we mean by hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing is essentially trying to see whether a particular model is likely to be true or false. And to do that, what I'm going to look at is assume that we have a Poisson distribution where we have a random variable x which is distributed as a Poisson distribution with mean, not 60, but just generally some particular number. We'll call it theta. So we would expect that general value theta to be somewhere on the number line. And you'd expect results to be scattered either side of that value theta. And we call this the null hypothesis when we assume a particular model is true. And the symbol that we use for that is H with a little zero, H zero, although some people will pronounce it HO. So that model, if we assume this, would be that the mean lambda equals the particular mean value here, theta in this general example. And if I thought that I was getting a value somewhere down here, I would be thinking that the mean has reduced. And we call that the alternative hypothesis. And the symbol for that is H with a little one there. And so it would be that the mean is less than theta. If I was up over here, okay, then I would still model my distribution, the null hypothesis, on the fact that the mean was theta. But if I got a value up here, I'd be suspecting that the alternative hypothesis, H1, was that the mean was greater than theta. Now there comes a point when we're going to decide 
when are we going to think either that the mean is less than theta in this end, this tail as we call it, the lower tail, or when are we going to decide that the mean is bigger than theta in the upper tail? There comes a point, there comes these points here, which are called the critical values. Now what they are, I don't know, but let's call this one here the lower critical value, and I'll call it x with a little l. And over here, on the upper tail, we'll call this one x with a u for the upper value. But you can use any notation that you like. Now, when are we going to reject that something's in this particular region? Well, if we're going to reject that lambda is equal to theta and it's less than theta, we reject HO if, and I'll just write this down okay, for you first of all, we reject HO if the probability of getting a value less than this critical value turns out to be less than a particular percentage. And I'll call that percentage alpha, if you like, just for the moment. Okay, So I'm going to reject HO if the probability that X is less than or equal to this critical value in the lower tail turns out to be less than or equal to a particular percentage, which I'll call alpha. And if I go over here, then I'm going to reject the null hypothesis in favour of the alternative hypothesis that the mean has increased if, and I'll just write it down here, if the probability turns out to be more than the upper value is less than the alpha percent. I'll write it down. The probability that x is greater than or equal to this upper value turns out to be less than or equal to this alpha percent. So what is alpha? Well it's called the significance level in most textbooks but really we should call it the nominal significance level. And I'll explain that to you in a moment. But you're going to get questions that are going to say test at the, well, you might just see it as the significance level, but it'd be good if they said at the nominal significance level. And that significance level is this value alpha percent. And it's very common to see in questions that alpha percent is 5%, although you will get it down to say 1%, and as I'll show you in a moment, we can actually get 10% as well. So these are typical values that you'll find in questions about the percentage that we're going to test at. Now, we've got these tests here, but we can actually have another test where we test that the null hypothesis is that the mean is our particular value, theta. But suppose we just want to test to see if it is not equal to that value rather than being less than or in the greater than region. So we would say that that mean was not equal to theta. And what this reduces down to is what we call a two-tailed test where we're looking at these two regions simultaneously. And what happens is that we reject HO, so if I can just write that in here, reject HO if the probability of X being less than or equal to the lower value is less than or equal to... Now, if we're testing at a particular percentage, and it tends to be for two-tailed tests, 10%, but it can be 5%, but generally say about 10%, what we do is we cut that percentage level in half. So if it's 10%, we would be looking at this side as being 5% and this side being 5%. So whatever alpha is 
you would reject HO if the probability of being less than the lower critical value is less than or equal to half that percentage level. Or you would reject HO if the probability that X was greater than or equal to your upper critical limit was again less than or equal to half that significance level. So this is called a two-tail test. Finally, what I want to show you is what do I mean by nominal significance level and actual significance level? When we're told to work out the significance level or the actual significance level of a test, then what we mean is the actual probability of being less than or equal to your critical value, either the lower critical value or the upper critical value. So in this particular case, if they said work out the actual significance level, the actual significance level, I just abbreviate it SIG level, okay, would be the probability of X being less than or equal to this particular value here. And it won't necessarily be the level alpha percent, all right, because we're dealing with discrete probabilities. I'll show you this point in examples that will follow in other videos. And over here, if you had to work out the actual significance level for this particular test, the actual significance level, let's just write that in, actual sig level again, will be the probability that x is greater than or equal to the upper limit. All right, that will be that probability. So this probability will be the percentage then of being greater than this upper critical value. And when it comes to the two-tailed test, the actual significance level is the sum of the two probabilities here. So it would equal the probability that x is less than or equal to the lower critical value plus the probability that x is greater than or equal to the upper critical value. So I hope I've answered all your questions now, introduced you to hypothesis testing for the Poisson distribution. And what I would recommend is that you look at my other video examples now, where I will show you through the examples how we do each of these cases.